So in our lab, we make dishes, um, and so we need to clean them. And there is a, a process by which this happens, the first of which is to um, add detergent to our, um, to our dishes. Then we're going to rinse them out with regular sink water, and then we're going to actually use reverse osmosis water, which is essentially free of any ions, do a triple wash. It will then dry here, and then we'll autoclave it. And that's going to get rid of any um, RNases and DNases that would get in the way of our um, molecular biology. So what I do first when I wash a dish is I set up my drying station. And you can use paper towels or you can use the drying rack here. And as you can see, um, we have a graduated cylinder on the rack, which I'll show you about. So um, here we have a squirt bottle. It's labeled detergent. Um, if this gets low, just let me know and I'll make up new detergent. It essentially does not um, create a lot of um, uh, bubbles, um, and hence it does not um, have a lot of residue left over. So what I do is I just squirt it gently into every part of my dishes. Okay, It's very simple, just a little bit. And then depending on whether or not there is residue on your dishes, you can use um, a uh, sponge or you can use um, any of these brushes here. What we're going to do is turn on the water and we're going to simply swish around the soap, ensuring that this is now free of any residue that was in this graduated cylinder. And then I leave it on the side. I do the same for my next set of dishes. And you should do this with gloves as well, because you don't know what's been in these things. Again, none of this had residue, so what I'm trying to do is just get anything out of it that might have been sitting overnight. In the lab, we typically do dishes once a week and that will be on the Google Calendar schedule. Okay. Okay, so now that these have um, had detergent in them and regular water, what we're gonna do is use the reverse osmosis water to do three washes. So for the graduated cylinders, I simply fill them up, let them spill over, pour them out, and do that three times each. Put it over here to dry. So um, after you do the dishes, you have to wait to let them dry. This typically takes overnight, but I do have a um, graduated cylinder that is dry. So to prepare for autoclave, what we're going to do is add some aluminum foil. You can use a small piece as long as that it fits over the top, and make a tight snug. Then what we're going to do is grab some autoclave tape. Autoclave tape is in this drawer, and basically what it does is it has these um, temperature-sensitive chemical reactions that turn these white lines into black lines if it gets over 120 degrees, which is what the autoclave will do. We do this so that we can get rid of the RNases and DNases that are in the, um, uh, in the water. So let me find start of it. And all you need is a very, very small piece of autoclave tape just to indicate that it's actually been autoclaved. So what I'm going to do is put this over the top, okay, and then it's ready for autoclaving. And as you can see from our shelf, this particular um, uh, flask has been autoclaved because the tape has reacted due to temperature. 
So the autoclave um, uh, is upstairs on the fifth floor. Um, on that fifth floor, there are these autoclave safe buckets. It is very, very essential that you only autoclave with plastic that can go up to those temperatures. If you grab any bucket, for instance, a bucket out of the satellite accumulation area that's gray, it will actually melt in the autoclave and it will smell and be a hazard. So we will um, show you in a moment um, what, where these are found upstairs. We grabbed one. And all you're going to do is start filling up your autoclave bucket um, with your autoclaved, uh, needing to be autoclaved materials. And then you're going to go up to the fifth floor. So now we're on the fifth floor. Um, room 518 is the room that you're going to want to enter for the autoclave. Um, it is locked unless Sonia is here. Um, you will need a code to get in, and you can get that code from me. So this is the shelf where you can um, take uh, materials from to put in the autoclave. Anything that is not on this shelf is not autoclavable, please don't take it. So there are a couple of these larger bins, these metal trays are fine, and so are these. So what I'm going to do is take this and put my graduated cylinder in here and then move to the autoclave. Okay. So right now, the autoclave is in standby, and what I'm going to show you is how to use it. So the first thing is that you just pull this down. If the autoclave is actively running, do not touch it. It should be in standby. Okay? And then what we're going to do is simply slide this bucket and its contents into the autoclave. Now we have the materials in the autoclave. What we're going to do first is just bring this up. Please don't slam it. And then we're going to touch this screen. All the instructions are listed here. You're going to hear it go on and then follow the instructions. So press username. And you come up with this screen. The username is student, all in caps. So you first have to press cap. That will put the um, letters and caps, and I'm going to press student. This is our enter key. If you enter it wrong, we'll ask you to re-enter it. And then the password is 1000. Press enter. There are two types of materials that you can put in the autoclave. One is liquid. Um, if you are doing a liquid autoclave, you need to be very careful to pick that particular cycle. The difference between liquid and what's known as gravity is that when it vents the very hot air, if it does it quickly, as it does so for things like graduated cylinders, but you have liquid in there, it will actually evaporate everything. So if you are autoclaving something to make it sterile, um, you're going to want to do that on the liquid cycle. So there are a variety of different options. Um, we use the first two. The first of which is media. So anything that has water or media that you want to preserve but sterilize, you're going to want to um, press that. If you are using anything solid, you're going to want to use pre-vac too. So because I only have a graduated cylinder and no liquid, I'm just going to press pre-vac too. You have to do it pretty hard and it's going to go and say, please wait. And then it's going to want to know that you close the doors. Then you're going to have to touch it another time, hard. And don't walk away until it has actually registered an estimated time. Once it's turned green, then you can come back um, around the approximate time that it gives you. Now, just to be sure, it's probably going to take you about 20 to 40 percent longer than its estimated time. So give yourself an hour to an hour and a half to do autoclaving. The other thing is that this machine um, closes down at night, and so you want to take your materials out before you leave for the evening, or else it will actually stay on at night. So don't do any autoclaving after 6 p.m.